<laughs> it's really based on junctures in your life. And um, I think with a lot of this frustration, which mm. happens through a, you know, a series of different events that yeah. in our timelines, we just see them as you know, coaches on a train. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like mm. this is, these are pent up emotional boxes that we internalize shit. Yeah. Maybe it just like one part of our career. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you get through the mist and you're clear again. Yeah. Is that so curious how that fucking happens, man? It's perspective, man. Mm. It's perspective. You're you're not you're not seeing you you don't get to see the whole train. You mm. literally just you're exactly it's just carriages you get to see. And I think the older I the older I get in in what I do, the less personal I take it and the less attached to the outcome I become. Mm. And the more I get to play the game and enjoy it. Which is, which is why, like, I don't do genres anymore. I just do whatever genre I want to do at that time. We'll because, come to that in a bit. <laughs> because to me, again, it's like the freedom of, of being a creative. Like, there's, there's, you don't have to attach, oh, this part of my career is when I'm doing this and this part of my career is when I'm doing that. It's like, nah, what do you feel like doing right now? The Killer Killer b- 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 Podcast. KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Buckle seatbelts. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London or as central as you need to be for your uh, beginning of the week. Whenever you're listening to this, hold tight. Thank you for sharing and caring because I know you would be for the sport and art. It's the Street Culture app, Keller Vision. You can get it on a download free iPhone, Android for all your Street Culture sports. That's right, mini docs, mixes, full docs, a notorious podcast that you can't fail to miss. Come on, son. Where you been? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> persistence is key in this game. And there's a gentleman that's sitting right next to me that beyond measure deserves flowers. You know, in the ever increasing timeline of hip hop and all the uh, ups and downs that we go through in this UK hip hop career. Uh, there's one man that certainly stood alongside me in my career over the God knows how many years. He f- does not leave me any more than to say his name. Uh, v Recordings model, uh, you know what I mean? Rick Cross collaborator and albums galore. The mighty Genesis Elijah. Oh, brother. I appreciate that. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm really good, man. Yeah? Yeah, I can't I can't complain. I'm, yeah. I'm really good. Yeah. 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 It's 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 a funny time to be alive for us, man. We're in the we're in the mids now. We're in the mids. We made it. You know what's funny, <laughs> right? So I know of you, but I don't know you. Mm. But you've always been like when I came, when I was coming up into the game, you were already killing it. Mm. And it's it's been yeah, it's been amazing to see like the growth, like we know we're saying off camera, like just before, like we've been here for a long time. Mm. And I feel like it's there's something about us, yeah, that's mm. a bit a bit weird that we just won't stop. What is that? What is that thing that doesn't make an artist, a long-standing artist, want to stop? Uh, this is a critical question because I know there'll be a lot of people out there at the moment that might even be stroking their chins right now, thinking to themselves, what the fuck am I doing? I think, you know what it is? I think it's bigger than, because it's the reason. I, I just was just at school just um, earlier doing some youth work and I'm talking to the kids about um, like why you do what you do. So you got your purpose, like you know what your purpose is. You got your, your, um, your reason, you got your vision so you can see what you want to do. Then you got your reason, then you got your mission. And I feel like that reason is a massive part of it because when I, when I started doing this, it wasn't, the, the reason, like, why I did it, because I wanted the people that I looked up to to be able to be, to be like, yeah, nah, he's cold. Pish it. Like, yeah. that was, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that was it. That's all you need. And everything else was a bonus. So yeah. all the no's, like, they don't really bother me. It's mm. just, oh, that's, okay, cool. Because I, I, when I came into the game, the things I wanted, I already, I already got, I already have. So everything else is a bonus. So there's never any time when I, I, I spoke to people that I'd be like, nah, man, I'm quitting because I'm just not getting what I want from it. But I already... I already got what I wanted from it. Like, I wanted Black Twang to go, yeah, now nah, you're Oh, cold. come on. Like, you- that was, that's what I wanted. 
Queen's Heads. Like that, that, that whole album, I was only talking, the, f- the first Black Twang album, that, I mean, I was only talking about this the other day to Harry Shot. Big up Harry Shot, uh, big up David Ross out there, because, you know, we literally were talking, weren't we, Dave? You know it. Iconic. Yeah. Iconic. That, it, was the, it was our Nas Ilmatic. Right. And when you hear some, like, we've all been there. Like, yeah, if yeah. you're doing really good and your peer gives you that yeah, kind yeah. of respect, you know, it just, it, just, it just adds even more weight to why you do it and what albums, sig- significant albums like that do for people like us. This is the thing, yeah? So, and this is what, like, a lot of the, the young people don't get. So, coming up here, yeah, I didn't even know, when I got Black Twang's album, <laughs> I didn't even know what you looked like. Because all these pictures in there were like kind of fuzzy. For real. Like, you don't even really know who this person is. Real talk, yeah. Then there's a feature on it mm-hmm. that says um, Roots Maneuver. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I have no idea what he looks like or who this person is. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to see them, you had to see them. So, going to, like, going back to WKD days, my brother must have come back one time and was like, yo, I was just at this place, WKD, and like, Bear Man were there, like, Skinny Man was there, and Task Force. I'm like, Shut up, like what? <laughs> They're just there, yeah? Like these people are, so obviously I started going and then you start seeing the people that you're, you're, you're listening to, like you're seeing them in the flesh and it's a different, it's a whole different thing because it's, it's a case of even how you consume the music, like it wasn't like I just heard these people in a playlist casually. Nah, mm. man, the album was getting regular play. It would, it would finish and we would start again. So you're listening to this non-stop. So by the time you meet these people, you feel like you really know them. Yeah. And you've been, all the time I've been honing my skills and doing what I'm doing. So when I finally met Black Twang for the first time, it was like, I'm, t- to me, and it still is, like it, it's still the same. Every time I see him, it's still the same. It's like, that's our Jay-Z. That's mm-hmm. our, whoever you want to put at the top, that's who it is. Yeah. And it's, it's one of them things, it's like, yo, you see what you do, yeah? I do something similar. I want you. I just want you to hear me. That's it. And for some, for them to just go, give a chance to listen and go, yeah, now you're cold. Yeah, mm. you're right. That was it. Like that was to me. That was the the best thing ever. And it's funny. A lot of my stories with that, that come down to like the the times in my life where I was proud. Black Twang's a part of. It's, mm. it's actually mad. Big but, moments. Yeah, big moments because this is the person that I looked up to. This was the first person that I really heard. I was obviously I was listening to like hip hop forever, but hearing like a UK voice, somebody talking about South London, like where I'm from, rapping like this kind of the vibes he was bringing, to me that was crazy because it's like it it kind of validates what where, where you're trying to go. Mm. You're like, oh wait, oh I can actually get there. And to this day, I've always been. I remember having this conversation with someone. They were like, oh, what do you like? What do you want from your career and stuff? And I was just like. Where Black Twang is, I just want to get to there, mm. and I've never got there because he's he's always leveled up. So every time he, every time I level up, he levels up, and it's to me it's a beautiful thing because it means like you're the people you look up to, they're they're doing, they're still killing it, and they and and to this day he's still, it's always pushing me to do better and to do more. Mm. Like, yeah. I feel you. There's also the aspect of characters in the game. Mm. You definitely hold court. In you know individual, and I know you know this, but the, the the from the from the outside looking in, the personification of Genesis and the way that you it, on measure. I mean, like yeah, like you say, you know, t- Black Twang is like he's 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 our Jay Z, our our Nas. Mm. You know, Skinny Man is, and this is quoted by Invisible Means. You know, he's our he's our Keith Richards. He's like, <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and he's got yeah. he's got more kind of he's got more. Um, rugged the, the, the older he's got in fact yeah. he looked better than he did when he, yeah, <laughs> he was yeah, young yeah, he's just yeah, looking yeah. more refined and just like like a fine wine you know and Skinny's a myth he's like a myth. to me he's a myth because it was like you never again first time hearing Skinny Man like, on the radio I think it, it might have been it might have been a Shorty Blitz show and hearing a Skinny Man track and I don't think it was even his track man I think it was he was featured on it and I remember just hearing hearing him rap and, and obviously kind of Again, hearing the name as well. This is before I've ever gone to any UK hip hop nights. Didn't know anything about UK hip hop, uh. and kind of going like, "Nah, this guy's cold, man." Mm. Like, and and it's almost like the legend of Skinny Man was already was already <laughs> out there. <laughs> so by the time I met him, it was just like, "Oh, like, mythical raw, god, yeah, it's for real." And he and I think he, he's kind of when you talk about characters again, that's some of the the thing I feel really proud of in in UK hip hop 
is is the characters, how everybody kind of found their lane and and understood like how do you use hip hop to really push forward a character? Mm. How do you use hip hop to really build this image of of what the rapper is? Mm. And I feel like the UK has done that very well, especially from that that era. Because to be fair, what we were looking at, like if you look at like the, the American stuff, it to me it wasn't it wasn't really there was gangsters there, like the gangster stuff, and but as far as like really pushing different avenues, mm. that's the stuff that we were really good at mm. because it was like we almost had to find other ways of doing it. Like we couldn't just go to the 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 default. I'm a gangster. Mm. Nah, 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 nah. So what? Mm. What's your bar saying? Mm. What else? What else do you have? What individuality do you have? hundred percent adds to the tapestry. Yeah, but and you even... have you have that as well. And and what's in, and sorry to cut you short nah, because just to you know, circle back around my initial statement of why do we do it? I think you've got to do it over the long game for you to be identifiable within that tapestry. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 like yeah. really um, mould that character, the brand, the style, the lyrics, the versatility yeah. up against that West Coast, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, one of the, I guess one of the things like com- coming up, I was, I was always trying to, it took me a long time to find myself though. So I would say like when I first started rapping, I was still trying to do my style was still quite Americanized. Even when I was when I like I'm talking before anyone probably heard me, but I was listening to obviously Snoop and Ice Cube and like the West Coast rappers, that kind of style. Mm-hmm. So that was more the, the style I was coming with. By the time I heard the UK stuff, I was I was still doing that but in a UK accent, like proper uh, to be I always did a UK accent but it was just still very much the stuff I was hearing I think Roots Maneuver kind of changed uh, the, the way I did it a little bit but the person who had the biggest influence on me was well actually probably two people would be Kalashnikov and Chester P so mm. they were the two like artists that when I first heard was like oh shit mm. like okay that see I was rapping mm. but they're doing something different and that's where I need to go with it. So what Kalashnikov would do, he would do like the the introspective, deep stuff, but then he would bring it right down to earth. And that, to me, that was a style that was like, I want to do that. That's the part I want to incorporate into what I do. Mm. Then there was, then what Chester P would do, Chester P would do imagery. Oh, big time. Right? So it's like... I got goosebumps when you said that. It's, it's so true. It's Because it, it's crazy, because he's making you see stuff and he's like... He's 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 linking things together in a way that's way closer to um, what we what we would call traditional poetry mm. than what we would call we would call like traditional rap. So again, that's that's a part of the game I wanted to incorporate into what I was doing. So mm. if you listen to my early stuff, very very heavily influenced, and it wasn't till like a good I don't know man a good few years later until I got to a point where I could kind of like step away from that. But those were still like the 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 um what's the word man like the framework mm-hmm. like the the um, scaffolding of of what I was and it wasn't until I kind of then I came away and got my own style but you, if you listen to my music the bones of like the foundation of what what I got from them will always be there mm. because in my mind it's like regardless of what I do I'm always thinking what if they heard it? What would they? What would they think? Mm. Like, how would they? You know what I mean, like, mm. what's their? What would be their take on it? Because for me, that was they're the best to ever do it. So that was to me. I was like, right, cool. That's where I want to want to take. And there's other rappers in there as well. Like, flow wise, Rodney P was a big one as well because mm. he would he'd leave space. Lots of space. Yeah, like he would he would he's giving you the vibe. Swag. Right, pure swag. So all that kind of stuff kind of goes in it. But yeah, it took me a while to find like what's who is Genesis Elijah? Like, what does what does Genesis Elijah rep? And what are the things that only I say that no one else would say? Mm. And, and then that's kind of to me that's how you build who you are as a as a as an artist. How do you? Because you mentioned it's for for peer's sake. It's you know mm. when you begin you and now you continue. It's yeah. just that that validation is the wrong word, but I think in our own subconscious we all need that. Yeah. That actually takes you through a fucking long... How long's a piece of string? Because as long as you've got peers around, 
this becomes a competition, doesn't it? Almost, yeah. it's a game. It's a role play. It's it's gameplay. It's a it's definitely it's definitely competition because for me, like, I'm. I, I guess now it, I've I've changed how. It's it's like fighting, man. Like before, I was trying to kill everyone, mm. and and now it, it's more like now how can we dance or how can we make this a good a good sparring match if we're on a track together? Like what did what if you bring something to the table? What did you not bring that I can bring? So what do I need? How do I need to approach it rather than oh you just did whole bars and multis and syllables and da 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 da? I need to I need to kill you. I need to get over mm. that. No, no, no. You, you, did, you did that? Mm. The track doesn't need that anymore. It needs something else. Let me come with that so we can actually bring, like, the best version of this song. So, again, like, the, the competition element for me is, number one, it's longevity. So, the, the, there's been many times in this rap game where people thought it was the end of, of me or, or, like... Yeah, so and so one. Does that G you up? One. Does that fucking G you up? When... Yeah, I love that shit. Really? <laughs> I, lo- it... like, I love that, man. Okay. <laughs> right. Because <Okay>. I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I work way more off negative energy than positive Do you? energy. Yeah, hundred percent. Is that a good thing? Um, is, I doubt my therapist would say it is. I think I feel like it's a. I don't think it's healthy. No. Or, or maybe it is. I don't I, know. I, I like. I, I feel depends, like. Isn't it? Depends if they're successful or not. Yeah, but even if you are successful, one of the things, my, I mean, my auntie telling me, she was like, do it, but make sure you're doing it for the right reason. Like succeed, but succeed for the right reason. So you never want to succeed for it to be the downfall of somebody else. So th- th- there comes a point where you, the, the success in what you do has to be for yourself because you have to be doing the things you want to do for yourself, not just to like s- slight somebody else. Yeah. So you don't want to be have all the money because some, like, yeah, I'm rich, you're broke wait then what yeah, do you want the money work, for yeah. right cool so but the, the competition side of it for me uh, when I say the negative side it's that idea of nah you can't do that then to me it's like that does that does way more than someone going yeah you can do it mm. I'd be like alright cool thanks but if you say nah you can't do it then it's like oh wait what oh okay right now, I, now I'm really gonna because I'm trying to prove you wrong and then once I got it I can be like yeah I did it so what's the definition of success then? What if you surpass your uh, your peers? What if what if you well yeah? What if you take out one of your peers? What if what if they turn or actually more personally? What if they turn around to you and go, you know what, dude, you fucking done it. it does that affirmation actually clear air for you? And you're like, ah, oh, you know what, I kind of didn't want you to say that because now I'm, I'm I feel I, you know I'm, I'm a little bit subdued. Nah, I, I wouldn't say that you know because because I, I still I love the. When it comes from for, for peers and people I respect, I don't think any of them would ever be like, nah, well, not to my face anyway, they would never be like, no, nah, you can't do it. They're always going to give you that those words of encouragement. And those, those words of encouragement mean a lot. I remember mm. one time, man, I was, um, I was online, I think, and I was doing my usual Facebook or Twitter ranting about something. And Ty messaged me and he was like, you're winning. And like... At that time, yeah, I just broke down crying. And this mm. was like, I can't, I, I, I can't remember what year this was. So this must have been about maybe 2016, 2017. Like it was a, it was, it was a little while ago. Mm. But it was like me almost fighting these, this, against this invisible wall mm. or these invisible enemies mm. and not even being able to be so deep into it, not even being able to see the, that you're actually doing well. Mm. And the things that you're, you're, Going, you're fighting against some of them. You might have beat them already, and you might just have to slow down a little bit and look around and really understand what you're doing this for. And it took somebody. It take. It took someone like Ty, because Ty was a person who, um, he's a pure artist, mm. so he he just sees things in a different way. Mm. And the, again, his his level of or his idea of what success is, is was very different to mine. Mm. And it took him to remind me, okay, you're, this is what, what you're doing it for. And if this is what you're doing it for, you're doing very well. So stop moaning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like... Rest in peace, Ty. That's the real, time, he's right. the most realist dude. That I, That's not surprise. <laughs> realist. A total don. Like, one of the only, one of the only people who... Um, I guess now I'm, I'm very different, but when I was younger, it would be very hard to talk to me in a way that I'm not going to get defensive if you're saying something that I feel isn't, 
like people blow smoke in it. That's what people do. Mm. Ty was never that. Mm. So Ty was always the person who would sit you down and go, nah, that ain't it. Mm. Like, yeah, nah, you're, everyone else is telling you you're the best in the world and you're amazing. Nah, you're not. This is this is where you're falling down at. This ain't that. Or I would I talk to anybody and go, yo, jump on the track. Everyone be like, yeah, 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 cool, cool, cool. Tell your time, man. I got this track. Nah. Mm -mm. Mm. And I, and then you're like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. What is it, beef, bruv? Like what? No, 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 not at all. Don't ever take it that way. You where I'm, where I am, and where you are, we're not on the same path right now. You're not you're not singing the same song I'm singing. And until you are, it's not gonna work. Mm. And you you need someone to. Um, the reason why Ty was like that is because he's someone who he was a humble person right mm. so he he says things in humility and if you said the same thing to him he would take it that way yeah. and he expects you to take it that way as well so you kind of have to be on that level yeah. and, he, and it taught me like to go oh this ain't even about it's not, it's not about like it's not an ego thing and your ego shouldn't even be wrapped up in, in the creative side it's way bigger than that and that's another thing that Ty was it's like mm. the creative side it's bigger than us. Like, let's say, like, we're just human, man, but the creative side, it, it, go, it lives forever. Mm. So you should treat it in that, in that way. It mm. shouldn't be, oh, because we're just here, we're going to do a song together. Yeah, That's not how I'm working. That's not how I'm living. You might be on that, but that's not me. And I had to learn that. Like, okay, I respect that. Again, I have a different way of doing things, but enough to respect him to be like, oh, nah, I get what you're saying. I get why you do what you do. Mm. But, and, 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 and go back to what you're saying. I feel like, in, in those in those times when someone who you respect tells you, yeah, now nah, you're doing well, you're doing good. It's the world. It, yeah, it's it still, it's like, yeah, nah, I'm good. I'm, st I'm still going to keep going. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to keep going. I think the, the negative side is really for like the, uh, uh, not the haters, because I don't think I have haters, but to some people, you're going to be a prick. Like some people are just not going to like you, not going to like me, regardless of, but they got an image of you. Or, mm. or, or, Maybe they got me on a bad day. Mm. Or maybe they said something I didn't like and I approach them a different way. They just don't like you. Dude. So they're going to say things to you that you're not going to agree with. But they do definitely love you so much. <laughs> they love you so much. <laughs> they, they are secretly they, lovers. They, are love, <laughs> they love you. They want, they, they, they want to know what you're doing. <laughs> they want to know why you're doing it. This why the true. hell are you doing it? This why are you doing it? And, you know, I think um, careers are really based on junctures in your life. And um, I think with a lot of this frustration, which mm. happens through, a, you know, a series of different events that yeah. in our timelines, we just see them as, you know, coaches on a train. You know what I mean? Like, mm. this is, these are pent up emotional boxes that, we internalise shit. Yeah. Maybe it's just like one part of our career. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you get through the mist and you're clear again. Yeah. Is that so curious how that fucking happens, man? It's perspective, man. Mm. It's perspective. You're you're not you're not seeing. You you don't get to see the whole train. You mm. literally just you're exactly it's just carriages you get to see. And I think the older I the older I get, in in what I do, the less personal I take it and the less attached to the outcome. I become mm. and the more I get to play the game and enjoy it which is which is why like I don't do genres anymore I just do whatever genre I want to do at that time we'll because, come to that in a bit <laughs> because to me again it's like the freedom of of being a creative like there's there's you don't have to attach oh this part of my career is when I'm doing this and this part of my career is when I'm doing that it's like now nah, what do you feel like doing right now mm. there's no rules there's no rules anywhere so there's, we used to we used to act even though we were independent artists yeah we would act as if we were signed to major labels and so we would true. do what major labels did the behavior patterns the For, mentality right what's that about and and we still do it in a way like but at the same time it's like if you can if you realize that and there are bits that you can escape and do the things you want to do because you're an independent artist and because you have the freedom to do that, then you should do that because there's, all, there's almost no downside to doing it. Major labels have to move in a certain way because they got certain baggage, certain overheads, mm. certain uh, milestones that they're trying to hit. Mm. As an independent artist, you don't have that. All you have really, if you want to like, you could say you, you, you kind of have an obligation to your supporters cool that's a, that's cool but really you only have an obligation to yourself as a creator what do you feel like creating in this space in this time and day 
because, like, really and truly, that's the stuff that's going to surpass you. Like, none of us are living forever. And one day, someone's going to look back and just go, what, what are these people up to? They're going to they're gonna find bits. They're going to find bits of art, bits of creativity. The same way, what's his name, was digging up soil and finding Roman coins and finding a pot. They're going to find the big music. Big up Tony Robertson. First big time up. he's been on the podcast. Yeah, big up Tony. Go on. <laughs> yeah, he's a dun still. <laughs> he's a dun. He love Black Adder as well. Yeah, come on. <laughs> but like, that's the way I see it. Like, mm. I, that's the way I see the, that side of creating. Like, I love creating. And music is, is just, is really just one part of that. But at the same time, I want to experience all the levels of it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, it doesn't have to be it. the things, if they're not ready or they're not perfect in your eyes, then don't put them out. No, 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 no. Like, mm. just do it, man. Just do them. And let someone else decide how how they um, how they receive it. Mm. And that's art. Like, you don't even get to... The amount of times, yeah, we make songs and we put in a whole bunch of money. We put money into production. We put money into the videos, money into the PR, and we put it out and it's crickets. No one cares. It's like, you might get, yeah, cool, that, that little push. Yeah, yeah cool, that's all right. Cool, cool, cool. The, the songs that really do the best are the ones where it's just me by myself. I make a simple beat and I throw it out. Because you, you don't get to decide what connects with the people. So again, to me, that's, that's the creative side. That's art. That's, that's the bit where you're just like, just do it. Throw it out there. See what, see what sticks. See what mm. happens. And, and kind of have that detachment from it. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's a deep one. That's quite profound you say that, you know. Quality is subjective, content's undeniable. That's basically what you Yeah, 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 yeah. Just fire it out there. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And, and furthermore, when you were talking about how this would be one day the Tony Robinson of digging mm. up these yeah. old fossils, these relics, fuck yeah, man. Like, I think there's an element of, there's an element of ego in that as well. The idea that we're going to be alive when we're dead to see people do that. That's true. <laughs> in a real David Bowie <laughs> yeah, kind yeah, of way. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she's not going to happen. But, <laughs> but I think, I think what's telling about the content of, of the likes of yourself and other UK hip hop and other genres representing is, is the, the more you can connect with a, a commentary that dials in could dial in on one person, yeah. but could be a, you know, it, it gauges the the temperature in the room, whatever decade, whatever yeah. generation. I think that's that's holds its weight it, it completely, doesn't it? Because we're storytellers. Yeah. So like, you're telling a story about one person, but it doesn't just affect that one person. It, there's a lot of people that feed into that, yeah. and like on the cynical side of thing, that's marketing. Yes, that's, it is. that's kind of what it is. It's like it's telling you a story of something, and you relate to it because you're like, "Oh yeah, that's that's me." But it's really not. Mm. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of processes <laughs> going at once. Exactly, and and it's and again, like I, I'm a I study in it, so I look I look at everything, and I look at like the Drakes, the Kendricks, the J Coles, and I'll see like the idea of of who they are and what they are and the music they put out. And then I'll see the common threads between them. So we see them as like all different artists, but at, the, but at their core, they're really the same, but they, they just present things in slightly different ways. Elaborate on that. Them Elaborate on that. I mean, this is, I know this is <coughs> personal right, cool. research and development here. I mean, yeah, do, you, yeah, yeah. do your own fucking business, people. I'm giving the game away here. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, this is, like, this, is, this is good knowledge, man. So... The, the mind of Genesis Elijah. You so when you're like... Uh, we, do this, we do this a lot with artist development, yeah, so... One of the things you see with artists that do very well is their music is really geared towards women. And because what we find or what you see is women are tastemakers. So like, <clears throat> it's been said before in music many times, yeah, that w women, women go, women make, women will do what they're doing. Men, we follow the women. And that's how careers get born. So especially on on high on the higher levels of like the pop world, so in the pop hip hop. Gotcha. So when you listen to with Drake, it's obvious Drake makes a lot of songs that are are aimed towards women, and you go, okay, that makes perfect sense. But you don't really have that same connection when you think of Kendrick and J Cole, because you go, 
Nah, they they don't really they don't really do that. Yeah, how's like, that connected? Yeah, no, no, like, like good kid, mad city. That's not about that's not about girls. Right. But yeah, it is. It's about Shireen. Like if you listen to the album, it really is. It's a thread that goes through the whole thing. You listen to some of J Cole's best songs. It's talking. It might be talking about his him losing his virginity, but it's a, it's a, a, a it's a topic or a subject that does is is aimed more at women to listen to and once you start doing that you start making those connections you realise like yeah that makes perfect sense the songs that do really well are the songs that are really aimed towards women because women are the tastemakers in especially in, in creative fields it's just the way for the most part the way things go but it's very subtle the way it's very, it, it, is, it? it is subtle and, I, and, and to be fair I don't, I don't even think a lot of people stumble on it by accident they're not even really trying to do that. But I've also seen it done the total opposite way and it doesn't go as well as you would really think it, you would want it to go. Mm. You, you listen to certain albums. My music is a, is a good example of that, actually. You listen to a lot of my music and really it's just me talking about me. Like, yeah, certain men will relate to that, but not a lot of women relate to it. So mm. it doesn't get, it doesn't really get that reach that it could get if you just broadened it out a little bit and if you and if you listen to my music there's been a clear change without me even, even realizing it from like 2014 till now mm. where a lot of my music has been just aimed towards women not because i'm trying to aim music towards women but I'm, a lot of my songs are talking about my wife and my kids yeah let's then pause for a second because what's the please forgive me what's the that 2020 album the cinematic fucking Adventures of oh 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 uh, 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 creatures <laughs> creatures uh, right, cool, cool, cool. Freaking creature of belief the mainstream it's a magnum opus yeah, yeah, yeah. of a title okay, okay, cool. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. Uh, one thing that I gauged from that early door I mean first of all you've got your beautiful wife on the cover yeah um, rock rock on you've been together for a while right yeah man twenty something years man come on get yeah, in yeah. celebrate that um, the album in its entirety holds so many gems you know from the tracks that well. <laughs> Some that don't have beats, the others that really do lean on yeah. the auto tune stuff. But then there's the rough and rugged stuff. Yeah, like yeah. you really played on the, the the plethora of different genres within hip hop. Yeah. There certainly is that thing that you talk about there. Yeah, a consideration to a more refined feminine listener. Uh, yeah, definitely to um, an extent. Yeah, no, definitely there is there is there's certain songs on there that are kind of. I would say I would say they're the ones that kind of hold the tra the, the album together actually. Holding so, the misses on the cover like a fucking god <laughs> for starters <laughs> <So there's> like, <laughs> through the fire. There's there's like there's two that the album was so fun to make. It's probably one of my like the album was made. I think I did that in probably two weeks, Damn. and that was like one of the most fun, um, fun times or experiences of of putting a project together because what I did every single. Uh, like snippet, all those movies, all those sounds, I watched all of them. So I was just there watching like these old 1920s, 1930s horror movies oh, and kind of like sick. feeling so good. That nostalgia and then thinking, oh, how can I make that into a beat? Oh, that bit there. And and then so I would watch the film, then I would listen to the film. So I'm so I'm watching the whole film, then I listen to the whole film, and then just take bits and go, ah, oh, yeah, that would work. That would go there. That could go there. Use that, and then kind of digging into like horror theory as well, like certain sounds. What are the sounds that make a song sound eerie? Like, okay, cool. How can we use? How can we incorporate that mm -hmm. in, into the into it? And then looking at, let's look at all the covers. What do the covers look like? Why are so many of them holding a woman? Like low, like literally, <laughs> so like fifty percent of them got someone, like someone holding a holding a woman. What's it's the like, what's the psychology behind that, Jokin? I think at the time you've got this idea that women are need to be saved, mm. so you're you're it, it's something is attacking the women folk. Mm. Someone has to save them. The most precious thing on right. life is yeah, yeah, needs yeah, yeah. to be saved. Yeah, and it's like because again you got to think Hollywood at that time. It's like it's just men. Like just make it up like weird scenarios. Yeah, yeah. And 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 the, if you if you watch the films as well, there's like so much like um, institutionalized sexism and racism mm. just kind of baked in mm. because that's the times. Yeah, and yeah. you're and you're kind of like even with the the people making it, even if it's not, again, it might not be 
overt. Actually, a lot of it was overt, overt racism, yeah, but it's sure. almost like you're dealing with people who just don't. That's they're not worried about it. They're trying to entertain. It's cringy as fuck. Yeah, like proper, like hundred percent, right? You just so, kind of there thinking, oh god, did yeah, just make it stop. <laughs> but like so, but then even with that, so I was like, oh, how do you make an album that has a story with it? So the story is is really like it starts off, kind of the happy kind of stuff, the um, spooky, you know what I mean, sexy, whatever. Then it goes to don't die before me, mm. and it's a it's a it's a a love song but it's really morbid. Mm. And then it ends with Meet Me at the Beach, which is kind of like, it's a poem, but it's really dark. Heavy. And it's it's kind of like the... It's kind of, it sounds like bad to say, but it's kind of almost like a suicide note. And it's like, this is where it's oh. going to end. And this is where, if you want to find me, that's where I'm going to be. Like it's dark. It's super dark. It's blowing my mind. So that whole thing is like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, but it's like mad. How do you? Uh. Because I'm trying to create an experience. So that's the, the experience of the of the project is, it, yeah, it starts light but ends really really dark, and it is that that, that kind of like couple intertwined um, within it. And I think with a lot of, especially the, the projects I'm doing now, I've actually got a sequel to that coming as well. Um, Return of the Creature. It's a bit casually just dropping that yeah, right that's, now. That's, 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 really, that's, that's coming. You, you have to go and check <laughs> check out the first, of course. And Creature um, from Beneath the Mainstream. That's yeah, right, Creature from Beneath. That's the one. Um, and you know, just to add a bit more dyn dynamism to uh, to to the uh, Genesis Elijah proposition. Like when I see you live, bro, like you just attack. So again, it comes down to um, character. So it's like, what's the it's the theatrics of of the show. So going back here, when I started, I started watching. When I came up, I would watch people like like Skinny Man, um, like Fallacy. Fallacy was always like a really a really uh, dynamic oh, performer. Big fouls for yeah. fuck's sake, man. So he was like someone who, like I'm little looking up, just like this guy's a. We all Again, were, bruv. <laughs> this is commanding, yeah? Yeah, big time. Right. So so to me, that was always the thing I wanted to be. I wanted to be like, how how can you be the best on stage? And so mm. when I was younger, I was very shouty running about because I just wanted to... Yeah, I remember. Right. So that was like my, my thing. As I'm getting older, I'm understanding other elements of the stage show as well. So if you go back and you, look, you watch um, a lot of the dancehall clashes, so you watch like Ninja Man vs. Supercat. I watched that a lot. Mm. And when I first, when I was younger, we used to watch it. To me, it was about, oh, they're just, the lyrics, they're clashing. Blah, blah, blah. As I get older, I'm like, oh, the theatrics. Oh, it's wrestling, man. <laughs> it is. Right, 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 right. So now Bill Wayne like, is a wrestling character. Without question. A hundred, right. <laughs> so, so then you kind of, you see like, oh, like this thread that comes from this, this, this clashing, um, the sound clash ever that's gone into hip hop, which is why we still have, we battle, we battle whether it be dancing, we battle whether it, um, yeah. So you got the b boy, you got the graph, you got the lyrics, you got the DJ in. We battle, mm. right? And with all that is the theatrics. So how do you command on the stage? So what does each song bring, and and who's the character within those songs? So I did a show at um, Jazz Cafe, and I did. Um, I did some songs from the last uh, full project I did, None of You Can Fuck With Me. And um, again, that, that album, it's Genesis Elijah, but again, it's, a, it's still, it's a deeper, darker character. Mm. So when I'm on stage, it's different. It's like, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get you to feel that. Because it's not just me going, hi guys, I'm going to do some lyrics. No, 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 no. It's not Sasha that. Fierce in this motherfucker. It's, it's, it's listen to what I'm saying. Character like, build. There's some, there's some weight behind these words and I need you to feel them and they have to be given in a certain way. So to me, that's all part of the stage show. And then, but that, cha that, that changes in genre because again, if we're doing, if it's a, if it's a garage show, that it's going to be different. The vibe's going to be different. Mm. If it's drum bass, the vibe's going to be different. So to me, the stage show is so important because mm. that's where the music really connects. I was at um, I was at Eurosonic in Netherlands uh, last uh, last week, 
Mm. And there's a rock band called Jen and the and the Jen and the Degenerates. Yeah, I know and them guys. Yes. Jen, like she, like they say, don't want to miss gender. Jen got on stage and just destroyed it, man. Like just did only what Jen can do, mm. and in a way, yeah, that because it wasn't. It was an industry room. So no one was really like, going, ah, but everyone was just staring. Everyone was just kind of like, but <laughs> they just, the way they commanded the stage, mm. the way they just did their thing, oh, I was just like, fucking love that. Like to me, like no matter what genre you do, it's about bringing yourself to, uh, bringing, bringing the, the, the how you made the music, I want to bring you to that space. And that's that's what they were doing, and that's what I tried to do. I, I want I want when I get on stage, I want you to feel, I want you to really feel the music, mm. and I want you to feel it in a way that maybe it even changes how you heard it in the first place. Because mm. you might have you might not have been in a place wh- where you might not have been in the right environment for the song, how the song's supposed to feel. Mm. You might not really get it, but when you're in the room, it's different. I think I, I can relate to this. this uh... What you're suggesting now, I understand, as a beatboxer, it was really easy to speak to the choir when you're beatboxing. There was something more exciting about um, firing shots to an unsuspected audience. And I think that measures up with what you're saying um, there when, when actually not only are you presenting your stuff to a new audience that may not be from our, our genre and generation. Right. But furthermore, when you're paired up with an alternative act yeah. on the same bill, yeah. you get the fuck inspired as well. That's, yeah, yeah, that's different. That's different. Yeah, Love yeah, that yeah, yeah. shit. I did, um, who, who did I, I, I supported um, Necro. Oh, so cool. At yeah. Jazz Cafe. Yeah, yeah heavy. And that was crazy because again, totally different audience. Mm. But, because they're kind of like in a space where they're 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 about to get crazy, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so yeah. they're willing. It means you can go a little bit crazier, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you you're kind of more free to do it. So yeah, I definitely get that. A lot of the times when I'm working alongside rock acts as well, again, it's like you 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 almost have a little bit more freedom. Yes, you do. Because of course they they don't really know what to expect. Mm. So it means you can just do whatever. And you can kind of go a little bit crazy because, mm. again, they're up for it. They're gonna mush. They just want the expi- They want the experience. And mm. again, it's almost different as well when you're talking about rock and metal. Um, part of the live show. The live show for a lot of the bands is where they shine. Mm. It's it's the stuff that their their fans. They yeah man, the album's cool, but we come to mosh. Mm. We come to see you live, and uh, they want that right. And there's some there's some great examples like you know Bob Villain, um, yeah, or Lethal Bizzle, Mark being Blade, man, yeah. fucking hell, you yeah. know what I mean? They, they all worked yeah. within the rock yeah. genre, yeah. and almost like gave their own um, stake in a, a alternative commercial world. Yeah, so they're much yeah. more of a, a broader sense of live mm. performance, isn't it? I think we're gonna see more of that as well, man. Like, yeah. I just started, so at the moment I'm working with Marshall. Um, as a as a booking agent, but okay. I get to kind of see like the direction they're going musically, and then I get to see the the acts in my world that would work really well in the martial world, mm. and and it's almost like we're getting to a point where there's about to be that that crossover, that reach, and I'm kind of right in the middle, and kind of facilitating, <gasps> yeah, that's that's gonna work over here, or you know what I mean, these acts are gonna work. If if they just have that little that little push that little direction, it's gonna change. Almost, it's gonna change like the audience. I had a conversation with one of the guys who works there actually, and he was saying that if I see a rapper like perform live, I'm like, yeah, that's that's cool. But if I see a rapper with a live band, it's totally different. Yeah. It's a totally different experience, and I and I'm now I'm I'm in because mm. I want to see what's going on and what they're gonna do next. And I feel like in this space, we almost need. We need we need more rappers with live bands because we actually need more instruments in music mm. in live music because I feel like that's the what's gonna push or or bring music back to where it kind of needs to be. We're we're, we're straying a little a little wide in certain areas and and the the live areas getting left behind a little bit. Mm. And I think we need to kind of not not change where we're going because progression is good, but that needs to be that needs to come with it. We need to go. We need to bring the drums, bring the 
it, it could be anyone. Imagine seeing Digger D with a live band. Like, yeah. it changes the dynamics of things. Or, or more so, how just, like, yeah, you're right. A thousand percent. I remember seeing Keith Murray live and mm. he had the whole band. Like, yeah. it was, and to hear his music with a live band was, you know, it's almost like a complete twist yeah. of what you would ever expect and hearing it was yeah. great. Um, just anything within a live that has a live value to it, isn't mm. it? Like, even you know, I saw this clip from Run DMC, big up DJ Lord, and like he, he just play like the, the DJs were slipping, but Jam Master Jays kept on going. You know, yeah, like, it's easy. Yeah, you know, fast forward now when you see certain artists and acts, you know they they don't even spit on their own. Yeah, 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 yeah. sounding old <laughs> like an old head. I don't mean to, but you know, because I like rowdy shit. Yeah, and I think. Genres do lean a lot more towards that. I mean, I the, the the MC is an accompaniment to a lot of genres nowadays. Yeah. But when you see hip hop in its purest, it's, mm. yeah, like you say, you want to see entertainment value. Don't yeah, you? yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think um, there's it's entertainment value, but it's also like the skill. Like, what's the what's the skill in a rapper? Like, we want to see we want to see you. We want to see you perform. At your at your best at your peak, and again it goes back to the theatrics band. Like, how do you bring all that 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 dynamic range into a performance? And the live instruments definitely help that. Um, yeah, but the genres help that as well. I mean, talking to the guy that's you know signed to V Recordings on some releases at the moment, and then collaborating. Big up Concept, my boy Connie. Big up Connie. Uh, States has my fucking dude. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> Yo, it does, my guy. Um, you're 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 reasonably fearless when it comes to these genres, as anyone should be. Mm. Um, but I think it echoes what you're saying about the mixed genre, the live performance, the adaptability. Yeah, you're kind of putting your money where your mouth is here. I think with the changing genres, right? So that's almost like because I never got it. So when I started doing um, when when grime started becoming like a bigger thing, yeah. Mm. And people were like, oh, like, do you spit on grime? Like, I spit on grime. And I was like, like yeah. Like, yeah. Why, would I, why would I not? Like, I spit on anything. I don't yeah. care. Like, and, and even this argument that we had back in the day is grime, hip hop. And, and I was never, I was like, I don't really, I don't really care, really. Like, yeah. I just, I just, do on what anything. you do. Yeah, yeah, like, it's not a I'm problem. I'm with that, bro. Like, it's just energy. Right. The whole thing. And I remember, I remember being in the studio one time and a guy saying to me, oh, like, what, what tempo do you like? And I was just like, what? <laughs> Like, that baffled me. I was like, what do you mean? What tempo? Like, what tempo do you like? <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, I'm here to do whatever in it. I don't, I don't, I honestly don't care about tempos. I don't care about genres. I, I'm, I'm about the vibe. Mm. And so for me, there's certain music that's going to bring out certain parts of your personality. So the, the heavy sample stuff with no drums, that's going to bring out a way more dark side. That's yeah. going to bring out a way more kind of. I don't even know, man. That's just, it's, it, yeah, it's just going to bring out a darker side. Yeah. Whereas to me, the garage, it's going to bring out maybe a little bit more fun. But even, you know what it might do? It might even bring in a more like, a more London side of me. You mm. know what I mean? And like the drum and bass, again, it's going to bring out a whole different different vibe. The jungle's going to bring out a whole different vibe. And the, the house and all that kind of stuff. Like when I do house stuff, a lot of times as well, because you're working with with producers who really want something really simple. And that's, to, at first, that was really hard to do. I remember my first house song I did, and they were like, oh, yeah, just like rap and we'll, we'll chop it up. Mm. I was like, all right, cool. I think I gave them like two verses. They used like two lines. I'm mm. like, wait, what? <laughs> like, what's going on? And they're the most mediocre unfought through lines that they just said. Right. It's so hard because they, and I've been there, man. It's like, how do you empty your mind and just say something so... <laughs> Vanilla, so normal, okay. so, so unemotive. Because you're looking at it differently. You know why? Because yeah. you know what? We, we used to have this conversation when when uh, people used to talk about future. Yeah. And they go, you ain't saying nothing. He's just mumbling, not saying nothing. And it's like, you're exactly. Not, yeah. Yeah. Like you're not even yeah. in the right place yeah. to like to see what he's doing. Yeah. Because yeah. he's doing something very different than you think. Very difficult. Yeah, well. yeah, 100%. <laughs> it's totally different because uh, like a house producer, when I jump on a track and start doing all these lyrics, the house producer's thinking, okay, I'm making this music because it's going to be played in front of a thousand people mm. that are on a whole bunch of different, uh, a whole bunch of different medication. Yeah. They're going to want 
a different feeling. Mm. There's certain triggers that they're gonna want to hear. I'm gonna I'm gonna be putting this. The drop's gonna be here, and this is gonna go, and they're gonna want. I know the phrase they want to hear. Mm. I can't hear that because all I'm hearing is. All I'm thinking is bars, 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 bars. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you want to try and add some right. value to this thing, right? 100%. <laughs> nah, it's not that time. No. So it's the same thing. It's like, if you think about, uh, if you go, there's different music for different times, yeah? So if you go into a club and everyone's there drinking, having a good time, and you play... I play my favourite UK hip-hop track. Mm. It's going to clear the floor. Mm-hmm. It's going to go. Like, it don't matter. It could be my music. I'm going to press play. And everyone's going to be like, what is going on? Mm-hmm. They're here for that. Mm-hmm. They want to hear something upbeat, Soundtrack party, shit. real simple, mm-hmm. because it's it's for a different thing. And you've got to think of it as like, it's almost like when you're preparing food. Like, you you have different food for different times. If if you, you go to a, um, a Michelin star restaurant, they're going to give you certain food. And the experience of the food it's not there to get you full up. It's there for you to experience different flavors from different places, how they work together. Like there's a story behind that, mm. like how they put that together. Mm-hmm. When you go to the chicken shop and you want ribs or spe- you know what I mean? I want ribs and chips. That's to get you full up. Mm. One meal is not better than the other. They're for different times. And again, that's with genres. It's all different styles and flavors. And mm. you got to think, this is for this, this is for that, this is for this time. When I heard um, Drake's um, uh, Honestly Nevermind album, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when that dropped, I remember being on Twitter going, nah, man, this, is, this ain't it, man. I didn't want this. I didn't want this. And this mm-hmm. went, no, 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 no. I don't like it. The next day I went to Brighton. I was on the beach, bikinis, all that. Oh, the album makes perfect sense. <laughs> That's where you're supposed to hear it. It's supposed to be heard bum, in bum. the sun, like people having a good time. Mm. It's not supposed to be heard in my room, at two in the morning, like mm. nah, bro, you're hearing it wrong. So again, that's with music, that's with that's with genres, and that's kind of like the the beauty of of doing different genres. Mm. It does make it harder when I'm trying to put a project together because then it's like, well, how do you fit all these bits into one mm. concise body of work? Mm. But again, to me, that that's where the beauty of of a uh, of um I don't know, just putting. The puzzle, making mm. the puzzle, like how does that arrangement becomes really important? Mm. Like how does that track go into this track, and what story are you trying to tell? Why mm. would you? Why would you go from a jungle track to a garage track to a hip hop track? Like, and how would you? How would you do that? Mm. So all that to me, then it becomes it's a puzzle. It becomes a little game, and I love that. Mm. But yeah, man, it's the genres are there to use, man. I can't stick to one genre. Yeah, and it's fantastic. We're out the midst of that expectation. People like Prince and Queen and Bowie, you know, right. they, they lock into no genre. Right. They fucking just did them. Right, but it's taken us so long. I listened to Prince um, yesterday. Oh, God. And I'm just like, you're not even... Going back to arrangement, yeah? Listen to, um, what is it? Uh, the Sky is So Purple. He don't even start... It's not even him singing. You haven't seen the first line. Yeah. Who does that? Yeah, who does that shit? What? He on was your... pitching up his voice before Andre 3000 by decades. Crazy. And... Even like I would die for you. There's no fucking baseline. Crazy. Just, just, just no baseline. Art- fine. Right. Because you, you're, you're just, he's in a different place, man. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the artwork. I remember. I remember being young, and looking at, um, seeing the artwork for, um, ah, uh, was it? What's the sexy album? Uh, he's, the one where he's naked on the cover. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, fucking. Comment below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your yeah, time you know to shine. What it is. You know what it is, people. And I remember being, being like, oh, I was super young. I remember looking at that cover like going, hey, what is going on here? Mm. And then as an adult, you go, ah, you made somebody, you're making people question. Like, that's what art's supposed to do. Provoking. You're supposed to look and go, wait, what? Like, if, and that's why even with like, um, The Creature of Unbelief, the mainstream, the cover, I took so long with that because mm. I wanted it to be like, it, I want it to be something you could put on your wall yeah. and be like, yeah, nah, that looks... What, what is, wait, what is that? Mm. That's cool. And or then, on a t-shirt or some right, shit. 100%. People think, is it a film or is it a... 100%. Yeah, I love that. So to me, like Prince was doing all that stuff mm. way before. A lot of these artists were doing these things way before. And, and over, over time, we've kind of forgot the creative side of... Because it, it, it costs money to do all those kind of things. You, it, nowadays, we want something done really quickly. We want something that's going to be cost effective. Mm. But... There has to be a, a point where we decide 
it's more important for me to create something that can last rather than me just giving you something that it does the job. Mm. Like it's got to be more, it, the cover has to be, there's got to be more to it. Like how do I make, every, I, I think it out of everything. No, titles, no, yeah, titles of, of songs. Like why is it called that? Like all this stuff, it, for me, it's important. It's all part of the process. And it's, yeah, it, it, it all ties in, man. But, yeah. Ties into girls, as Prince's album covers Come did. On, so your theory is so <laughs> Come on, you weren't talking, Prince weren't talking to no guys. <laughs> no guys. Like, are you crazy? And go to, like, when Prince was alive, go to a Prince concert. The only guys that were there were with their girls. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, yeah Prince was, you know what I mean? You couldn't get in. They, 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 the women love Prince because, yeah, man, Prince is Prince, man. Oh, Prince. Legend. Yeah, man. Just the, the real man. Yeah. Real man shit. Yeah. But he's like, you got to be like super confident in yourself. When Prince was 15, he produced the album and did he produced it, uh, yeah. wrote it, played all the instruments. 15. Mm. What, what? Yeah, it's not normal. What are you talking about? Nice. You can't tell Prince nothing. <laughs> like, you're real man for real. You can't tell him a damn yeah, thing. Yeah, he did. <laughs> And very much like you were saying at the top of the show, uh, history, you know, doesn't lie. And his his legacy will live on in all areas of media. 100%, man. 100%. What's the future, my brother? What's the fucking future? Man, do you know what? Unfortunately, I don't think I'll live long enough to do all the things I want to do, um, creatively speaking. There's just so much I want to do not just in music, but in film, in TV, in script writing. Um, there's, there's, there's just not enough of me and there's not enough time to get it all done. But I'm trying, man. I'm pushing things through. I was just having, I was thinking to myself earlier today, like I, I was filling out um, an application for a festival and they were so talking about what are you going to do in the future? Like what's your few next releases? And I, I have an idea of what I want my next release to be but I'm not sure how it's going to all come together. So I mean, that's the that's the process we're in right now, is just talking to... I don't even have a a, a proper producer at the moment to, to go over everything with me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm in the process of kind of sorting that out. Um, but yeah, man, I've got, I've, got, I've got plans, man. I've got plans, but I think over everything is to have fun with this. Mm. Like, to have fun and just keep creating and create opportunities for others as well. Because I, f I feel like I've done all right. Like I've done the stuff I wanted to do, I I've, I've done. Like I'm cool. And I've said this many times, I could, I could not put out another piece of music ever and still be fine, still be cool. You could never hear from me ever again. And trust me, no, I'm good. Don't worry about me. So there's nothing I have to do now to support myself and my family we're, we're good but it's like now it's legacy how do you how do you connect to other people how do you make this bigger <laughs> than what it is at the moment like how do you put other people in positions to get opportunities uh, like I said there's not enough time for me to do all the things that I want to do so how can I get other people to do those things anyway you mm. know what I mean to still so those things are still <coughs> still realised yeah. so that's that's kind of where I am at the moment man this year is a this year is a very um it's a transitional year. Hopefully, I get to put an album out at the end of it. Hopefully, I get to do a small tour. Um, if not, next year, one hundred percent and albums and stuff. Definitely gonna drop. Definitely dropping singles. I got um, a few singles dropping this year that I already planned. But yeah, it's just everything's up in the air at the moment. But in a good way, like not in a. I've been in I've been in a space before where I didn't know what was gonna happen and I didn't know how I was gonna do it. Hmm. Now it's not that. Now it's if I want to do it, I can do it, but it has to be done correctly and the way I want to do it. Hmm. That's the only reason why things are 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 the way they are. Now it's not a case of will a label put things out. It's yes, we have a few labels that will put things out, but what label are we gonna go with? And will these labels work with each other? Will we do a licensing agreement? Like how is it going to look in the future, like uh, publishing wise, all that kind of stuff. So it's, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's all first world good problems. Like mm. it's nothing crazy. You know what I mean, 
with a huge weight of level headed and experience on your shoulders as well. You yeah. see the glint in his eye. If you're listening and not watching, <laughs> amazing control right here. Yeah. This guy got control it's, in the building. It's good, man. Mm. It's a, it's a, I, I worked very hard to get to this, to this place. And while I'm here, I'm going to enjoy it. Um, yeah, I'm going to enjoy it. So that's what it, that's all it is, man. It's being like, present and just being in yeah, the moment. Yeah, that, like that's a big thing as well, man. Mm. That's such a big thing, and I, I, I'm glad you said that because I forget to do that. Like even now, I forget to do it. We'll do it, dude. <laughs> yeah, but it's crazy, but it's just like it's nah, good, hold it's up, good man. time to be Genesis Elijah, man. Just, it's like you know what I mean. You're in a sweet spot of the. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's, the, the landscape is open. Yeah. So yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be more present. I'm trying to be more self aware. I'm trying to be more grateful. Um, really trying to in, enjoy the fruits of my labor, and to to yeah, who like who else can I, who else can I help, man? Because because this this idea of like being as being self made, I'm not self made. So many people have helped me to mm. get to where mm. I am. Mm. Like we can like, we started just talking talking about Black Twang, mm. like Black Twang helped me out in crazy ways, man. Skinny man helped me out in crazy ways. All these people I've, I've mentioned have helped me out, man. Even having a conversation with them. Reach maneuvers people today, like there's this stuff that happens behind the scenes where people are like, Harry Shotter. Mm. Can't, I, 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 honestly, I can't even put down the amount of times that Harry Shotter has helped me out. Mm. Like, for no reason, just because, like, off the strength. Mm -hmm. Like, and to me, it's like those kind of those acts need to be paid forward. Those acts need to be paid forward. Yeah, man. Mm. Just like, well, who else, who else, who else can I help, man? If I can, if I have something, then you got it. I'm, I'm becoming. I did something the other day, man. Um, I went off, off social media for about a month. But while I was off, all the people I had blocked, I unblocked them, man. I was like, you know what? I ain't even got beef no more. Like, I don't even like, if we had arguments in the past, like, this is, this is gonna sound really, really, really morbid and a little bit cringy, yeah? But I, I'm, I'm doing it to, to illustrate a point. If I'm not gonna kill you and I'm not gonna die over you, it's not beef, man. Like it's really not. So it's, it's like it's not that yeah, yeah. deep, right? So deep. so we can never really when we don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. And it is it, every time we argue over certain things, it's always pay. It's always silly stuff. It's mm. always either like my ego getting the best of me, or I mean, me just taking things a bit too seriously, or them taking things a bit too seriously. But at the same time, we're all human, and all we all we want is love, man. Yeah. And it's just like, nah, do you know what, bro. man? There's no beef. Like, we had harsh words. That's all it was. It was harsh words. I love you. It's cool, man. Like, if you need something, I'm here. Whether I know you or don't really know you, whatever, man. It's like, life is life is way too short to let all these little things that get in our way. And it's just like, nah, I'm, I don't want to do none of that anymore. And obviously, I'm still going to make mistakes, but I'm trying my best to be a person. Who's and you still like, take you on the mic. You don't that. <laughs> <laughs> you still got your... You better look around. He's coming. You know what I mean? like, if, yeah, but I'm just... Yeah, I'm just trying to be a, a, a better a better person and um, trying, to, trying to be... Again, we speak about the character. The character Genesis Elijah is one thing, but there's also a human Genesis Elijah behind the mic who's just a normal person who doesn't have any special powers, mm -hmm. is like, just like you, just like everybody else. And it's just like, yeah, man, let's just show each other love and show each other some grace and patience. If you ain't inspired, I don't know what your fucking problem is. <laughs> Genesis, Elijah, is like the place. Thank you so much for passing bro, through, my nah, brother. No, love, man. You're a legend, bro. <laughs> like, for <laughs> yeah. real. Like, you're a legend. Yo, just paying forward. You know it's, I mean? a, it's, a, it's appreciated, man. Just you, like, you doing this. And again, like, I came up in the a, in a, in a spaces where, you know what I mean? You facilitated. I came up in a, in a, in a world that you really built. Like, and it means a lot, man. So, oh, my brother. Brother, thank it's you, It's always a man. pleasure. Tea in the pot, drinks in the fridge, ashtray on the table. Podcast in effect. Thank you, my brother. Thank you no for word. passing through. It's always a fucking pleasure to see you. And, yo, if you want more, you know what to do. Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We've got playlists for days, baby. Yeah, 400 episodes and counting. Jeez. Yeah, people more by the time we listen to this. This is evergreen content. You ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. You stay lucky, people. All right? Take care. Cheers. Peace. <laughs>